Guess what, guys? I called in sick today. <coughs> I figure it'd be the perfect opportunity to talk about the Dreamcast. I've been really wanting to showcase one of the systems in my collection. And I know I did a podcast with uh, these guys, the Super Mega Retro Dudes. And one of them got a Dreamcast. And I've been noticing people talk about Dreamcast lately. So I'd figure I'd talk about my Dreamcast collection. And here's my Dreamcast. I actually owned a Dreamcast at launch, guys. I had Sonic Adventure. I had Power Stone. Uh, I had Resident Evil Code Veronica. don't really remember what else I had. But I've owned three Dreamcasts as an adult uh, to play one specific game. We'll get into that a bit later. But this is the one I have now. Great system. I mean, look at this thing. I watched a Metal Jesus video years ago, and he described this thing as an exotic car, like a sports car. I would agree with him on that. I think it kind of does look like a like a sports car kind of look. I mean, look at them body lines. Damn, that's a nice looking system. Solid, too. Look at that. God. These are really, really well-made systems, and they came with, uh, like I guess, like an Ethernet port or however. Maybe this is like a dial-up modem. However you access the internet back in the day, I think this is some kind of dial-up modem. But they gave it to you with the system. That was kind of unheard of at the time. I think maybe the Xbox came with something like that. But this was the first, definitely. At least to include an item such as that with the system itself. But that's my Dreamcast. And when talking about the Dreamcast, let's talk about the Achilles heel of this damn system here. The controller. Now, I liked the controller as a kid. It never much bothered me. I really don't care that it doesn't have dual analog sticks. That doesn't bother me at all. Uh, what bothers me is this damn D-pad. I mean, I'm, oh my God, Sega, after coming off the Genesis and the Saturn, the Saturn, the Saturn's D-pad, you're going to go to something like this. I mean, Christ, even when the system was a thing, y'all had shooters on the system. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? So I always liked the Dreamcast. I liked it more as a kid. As an adult, you know, not so much. That damn controller. So anyway, this control is a problem. Uh, more recently, there have been options to mitigate this, such as the, the, the Striker DC or DC Striker controller. I do want to get one of those and test it out. I've heard good things about them. And they do offer dual analog sticks. For what games? I'm not sure. <laughs> but I found this at the flea market a couple weeks ago. And this is like a, a game changer for me. It's really invigorated my, my lust for the Dreamcast. And that is... The Assy Pad, or Assy Pad. It's right here. I got the box for it. Found this at the flea market. Yeah. Ain't that something? I knew about these things. I never thought I'd find one of these at the flea market, but pretty much, except for like the, the shooters that came out after the Dreamcast was a thing, like pretty much all my games I got from the flea market. System came from the flea market. This came from the flea market. The flea market is just the shit for finding Dreamcast stuff, games and systems and all that. But look at this. You can throw your VMU in here. It's got rumble built in. That's what that is. And you can turn rumble off. I guess I just call it vibration on there. God, that's a rocking D-pad, guys. My God. I love this controller. But yeah, I just figured I'd show that. I don't know if I uploaded a video really showcasing that controller. But the guy I got it from said that he wanted me to make a video and upload it to YouTube. Guy actually watches my YouTube videos, but anyway, yeah, the Assy Pad for the Dreamcast. I don't want to go into too much detail because I do want to do a video on this, but yeah, awesome controller. And this is like the SNK special edition. I guess at one point there were, I didn't pay anything like that, but that's what I guess they, they, they looked it up online. That's what they were asking for them, I guess. I don't know, but yeah, awesome, fine. Anyway, let's go into some video games, because that's really why we're here, right? The system's great, but what is the system without any games? So let's talk about some fighting games. Here we go. I'm not a huge fighting game guy. Like, yeah, I like my Street Fighters. I'm actually pretty good at Street Fighter. I'm like Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 4, you know, the quarter circle, half circle moves. You know, people my age, you know, I'm, in my, I'm almost 40 now. Um, you know, we grew up doing the quarter circle, the half circle, the forward quarter circle, and super uppercut, right? Anyway, I found this game. This is, I believe this is the Japanese version of Tecromancer, although it's called this. I have no idea. My God. I don't even want to try to pronounce that. I'll get my tongue tied in a knot there. 
but I'm pretty sure this is the Japanese version of Tech Romancer. I haven't even really got, I think I popped it in for like five minutes when I was busy. I had to do something. But uh, yeah, this is like a $5 flea market game. The Tech Romancer, I'm pretty sure that's like an expensive uh, Dreamcast game, at least out here in the States anyway. But uh, I was pretty sure that's what this was, so I picked it up. Again, it was like five bucks, so... You know, one day I'll, uh, hell, I might even today, I might even crack. This might, I heard this was a good game. I did. So it's kind of a shame that I haven't really played this yet. But anyway, here this is. And again, I do believe this is the Japanese uh, version. I guess the original, the OG version of Tech Romance or whatever it's called out there in Japan. I found this recently. And this is, uh, I guess this is the sequel to Virtual Lawn. I'm pretty sure this came out in arcades, whether it be here in Japan or only in Japan. Probably both, because this came out here in the States. This isn't an import. When I bought this, I thought this was an import, but there you go. NTSC, baby. NTSCU. Um, I got this nasty plastic wrapped around this thing, so sorry about that. But, yeah, Virtual On. You know, not not the greatest games in the world, but there's a lot of nostalgia. I played Virtual On as a kid. I had uh, a Saturn and Virtual On as a kid, I remember buying them on sale at the store and having a ton of fun with that game. Um, the, the controls are kind of weird on this. I haven't got used to them yet. But when I think about something like that DC Striker or Striker DC controller, whatever it's called, and I see the uh, the dual analog sticks, you know, in the arcade, this thing had like these two giant, like, even for the Saturn, this, they had like these two uh, these two joysticks that you would move around. I wonder... If there's some type of way you can use that Striker DC controller, use the dual analog sticks to play games like this. I mean, did they incorporate arcade style controls like that on this game? Was there some type of controller that you could use for this? You know, let me know in the comments because one thing they said they had at the flea market was an arcade stick for the Dreamcast. And I don't even have an arcade stick for the Dreamcast. Um, to the one that actually came out officially for it. I don't have any arcade stick for the Dreamcast, but I would, I would absolutely love to have one now they did again they said they have one at the flea market but they can't find it and they put it in the back storage room and that back storage area they have all these storage units in the back of the flea market they keep each one of them has like a billion video games in it um one day they let me back there one day they let me root around back there and i was busy that day and i have this is the game i found back there i peeked my head into one of the storage areas and i saw this and i remember i like you know it wasn't expensive I think on online this it's maybe now I'm not sure but um I remember I got excited when I saw this and brought it right home but there's like a ton of shit back there like this so I really need to get back there in them storage lockers and really root around back there at the flea market because uh you know, that, that gun star here is I was like right at the top of the pile I just saw it and grabbed it and ran out but, yeah that was like a random that was a random rant right there about the flea market but anyway virtual on for the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, next up, and I got this more recently too, Power Stone, awesome arena fighting game. Um, I, I'm not big on games like like Smash Brothers. I got friends that are. I got friends that actually play that game competitively. Um, I love Power Stone. Damn, this is an awesome game. And even though this is the Japanese version, I mean, it's, it's pretty much playable. It's even got like English voice acting in it, I think. Um, yeah, awesome game. I actually have... A port of this on the PSP and it actually plays surprisingly well but anyway Power Stone and it's sequel Power Stone 2 now this is one of those like thick cased games um, let me give you an example and this is for the this is a Saturn game um, the Batsu gun this uses one of the thick cases too I mean compare this to a regular style jewel case do you see how much smaller that is maybe you really maybe it's kind of hard to see on the camera but these two cases are, are a little bit fat, a lot fatter actually than this one. But um, yeah, so Power Stone 2 is a, uh, it's got one of those thick, thick cases. So if you're looking for a case to swap out, this is not an expensive, uh, at least I don't, I'm pretty sure this isn't an expensive uh, Dreamcast game, the Japanese version anyway. Um, again, this was like a, like a $5, you know, flea market game. I owned the original Power Stone as a kid. I never owned Power Stone 2. I played it on that port on the PSP. But um, I never really, I haven't really had the time. I'm a busy guy, so I haven't really got to crack into this one yet. But I played the game. Love Power Stone. You, you find stuff like this at the flea market. If you're, if you're someone like me, you pick it up. 
Um, next one, this is one I've had for, for years and years, and this is Capcom versus SNK. I, when I got a Dreamcast years ago, I found that flea market, you know, at the time, it cheap. I think this was 20 bucks or 15 at the time. Um, now what this goes for, I couldn't, probably 50 or more. <laughs> you know how the games are now, at least the, the U.S. release stuff, right? Um, but, you know, great fighting game, Capcom versus SNK. I'm not going to say any more there. And here's a game I haven't really spent a lot of time with, and that's uh, King of the Fighters Dream Match 99. Now, on the back of the case here, it looks like there's uh, some type of characters in, in some capacity from the, the little Neo Geo handheld system. Um, you know what I'm talking to, the pocket or whatever. I'm not sure if that's like a VMU type of thing or if that, I don't know what the deal is with that or if that's like a playable character in the game itself. Can't read Japanese here, so I don't know. Not sure, but you know, I'm sure that's probably what I paid for 20 bucks. I'm sure online this is probably a $20 game too. I can't imagine this is probably, I probably got ripped off at the, at the flea market there. Let's see. I'm pretty sure that's what I paid. About a year ago. Okay, 20 bucks. Yeah, I feel like that was not a good deal. I probably had money to burn at the time because I haven't even really cracked into this thing yet. But anyway, King of the Fighters Dream Match 99 on the Dreamcast. And let me know, guys, is this a pretty decent game? If any of you guys played this, am I missing out by not playing this specific fighting game? Let me know in the comments. Now, here's a fighter I like. This thing's got like this rocking hip-hop soundtrack to it. And that is Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Awesome, awesome, awesome fighter. Uh, again, flea market find. Um, this has kind of always been like a $40 and $50 game. It's probably a little bit more now after since the virus, you know. But uh, I've seen this around. This isn't like super rare. They, they, a good bit of these sold, I think. Um, but you'll find it if you seek it out. You will find uh, probably my favorite one of my one of my definite favorite fighting games on the Dreamcast, and that is Street Fighter Three Third Strike. Awesome, awesome fighting game. I don't really talk about fighting games a lot on this channel. I'm, like again, I'm not a huge fighting game guy, but that one right there, that's 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 the truth right there. Um, okay, let's let's kind of segue into shooters here, and I will do that with this game. This is a good segue game. Segue from fighters to shooters. What better game to do that? Then Twinkle Star Sprites. Yes, Twinkle Star Sprites. Um, found this at the flea market. I'm sure those of you that watch my channel are aware of Twinkle Star Sprites. It's a shooter. It's a fighter. It's a fighting game with shooting game mechanics. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe I'll have some gameplay footage uh, up on the screen. But uh, a game recently came out for the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. And you can actually get physical copies because I actually found one online. Um, and that's a rival Mega Gun. If you guys have a Switch or a PS4 and you're any bit at all interested in Twinkle Star Sprites or love this game, you all gotta play Rival Mega Gun. It's, it's an awesome, it's the same, it's the mechanics of Twinkle Star Sprites, but like enhanced with like added features and stuff. But anyway, Twinkle Star Sprites on the Sega Dreamcast. Okay, next up, we've got a banger here. This is actually a really hard game, at least to me, and that is Border Down. Um... There's like two versions of this that came out. This is like the limited or collector's edition. Um, it just, it, I think the only difference is it just pretty much just has a, has a soundtrack with it. But yeah, I found this at the flea market, right? Crazy. This is a great shooter. Again, probably not my favorite on the system. I, I feel like this game's really, really hard when you die. You know, that's like the border down. Um, the theme, it, 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 it borders to like a new difficulty, like easy, medium, hard, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll live stream this one day. I'm not that good at it, so I'll, I'll definitely make a fool out of myself playing this game. But a uh, pretty sought-after shooter. People are looking for this one. It's border down. Uh, next up, we have Castle of Shikigami 2 or Shikigami no Shiro 2. Um, this is probably... This is not my favorite version of this game. Uh, my favorite version of Shikigami no Shiro 2 has got to be the excellent brilliantly voice acted PlayStation 2 version. And if you've played that game, you might say, what the hell are you talking about, John? I love the awful voice acting in that game. As a matter of fact, the voice acting is so bad. So the voice acting in this game, the, the port, the NTSCU port that came out here in the U.S., 
was it was Japanese voice actors that I, I'm pretty sure they didn't know any English and they just they, they tried to voice these English lines and it is it is so awesome. I'm so glad that they added that. Um, you know, in this day and age, unless they were trying to be like cheesy or put out like a cheesy kind of vibe, they wouldn't do something like that. But and I guess this is, I don't know if this is some sort of collector's edition. It's got like a sleeve on there and some like cards in there. Uh, flea market find an alpha system, baby. They, they, their shooters are decent. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of alpha system. I mean, they're no cave, but uh, I mean, they're pretty good. But yeah, Shikigami no Shiro too on the Sega Dreamcast. A kid? Even kids fight these days? PIs begin with doubt also for human life. What does that mean? Never mind. The heat made him crazy. His outfit shows that. I know I need fur. Shall we fight? Let's. And here we have Salvariar 2, the Will to Fabricate. I guess that's how you pronounce that, Salvariar. I actually have a, like an enhanced version of this. I actually posted a picture of it the other day on Instagram. Um, and that is Salvariar 2 Ultimate Final on the PS2. But uh, for something about the Dreamcast, though, I love the roll mechanic in the Dreamcast. Um, this one's got like a water damaged uh, manual. But I got this from uh, my buddy James. This guy I actually met off of Instagram. Awesome guys, local to me. Um, big, big Dreamcast collector. James, if you're watching this video, uh, I'm sure you have all these games, buddy. He even had, this guy I'm talking about has one of those uh, Katana uh, Dreamcast dev kits. This dude's like a serious Dreamcast collector. But uh yeah, I got this from him, man. I think I traded him like a like a GBA game for this or something. He said he had like a few copies of this. So that's uh, Salvariar. Maybe I'm mispronouncing that. Please let me know if I am in the comments. Two Ultimate Final on the Sega Dreamcast. And probably one of the best shooters on the system, Gigawing. And the reason I say that is because this thing has a rocking soundtrack. I mean, yeah, the gameplay is there too. I like the, the bullet deflect mechanic. But uh, the soundtrack on this version... This has the better soundtrack as opposed to the arcade version. And when this got ported to the Switch, I was so excited. But they ported the arcade version to Gigawing, not the Dreamcast version. And I was like, oh, it crushed me. They need to have a collection. They need to come out with a console collection for Gigawing, kind of the way they did with Darius with the console and arcade. But put a serious emphasis on uh, on the on the console side of things, Capcom. Capcom, please, if somebody's from Capcom's watching this, please release a Gigawing uh, collection. I'm not concerned about the arcade stuff, but I want Gigawing one and two and Gigawing Generations, if that's even possible. I don't know how what the rights are or, or like with those games, but at least Gigawing one and two, at least Gigawing one. Port the goddamn Dreamcast to Gigawing one to the whatever to the Switch. The PS4, please, Capcom, please. Not the arcade version. I want the Dreamcast version. Excellent shooter. Can't recommend it enough. And, uh, yeah. In 2017, this was a $10 game at the flea market. Ain't that something? Now nah, this is like 100 bucks, but I don't really see this one that often. But uh, when I did see it, it came home with me, and that is giggling. For the Sega Dreamcast. I don't know why I keep saying for the Sega Dreamcast. Like I'm some sort of announcer or something. Um, actually, I did not find this at the Dreamcast. Like all that stuff there, except for this one, which I got from my buddy. All that stuff was uh, flea market stuff. But I got this game from a place called, uh, a few years ago, from a place called Just Press Play. And uh, this was in some one of the stores they have in Pennsylvania. Gunbird 2. I paid, yeah, this is what I paid for this, a hundred bucks. And they gave me 10% off because the manual had water damage. That, that's a lot of money. And this was a few years ago, too. I mean, the, the money did go to a retro store, so that's how I kind of justify a purchase like that. And it's like, yeah, the money's going into something that I like, a hobby that I support, that I believe in, that I want to be there. I guess that's a pretty good way of justifying it, but... 
excellent shooter. The only thing with this is, is if you use, uh, I think if you tap into like the VGA signal or whatever to convert to HDMI, uh, something about this game doesn't work good for that. So if you know about that, please let me know in the comments. But, you know, with upscalers and things of that nature and HDMI uh, options for your Dreamcast, uh, this game, for whatever reason, you know, this isn't the most graphically intense game. But for whatever reason, it does give uh, give you trouble with those upscalers. If you're just doing component in, you're good, though. But excellent game, excellent game. The, I, I feel like this port here of Gumbird 2 is better than what we got on the Switch in the Psycho Collection. This is a better game right here. Crazy as it is to think that this has less input lag than that does. So just throwing that out there. And uh, maybe I'm wrong about that. This is just how I feel by me playing the game. But uh, somebody like Shmup Junkie, he can come in here and he could debunk that if I was wrong about that. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm right about that. This has less input lag than the <laughs> than the uh, Switch port or the, in the Psycho Collection. But anyway, Gumber 2 on the, again, Sega Dreamcast. Um, okay, let's uh, let's switch things up. Let's switch things up. Let's talk about some RPGs on the system. Now, I pretty much sold all my RPGs on the Dreamcast, except for I didn't. I never owned Skies of Arcadia. I got that on the GameCube, but yeah. I, I see it a lot on the Dreamcast. Maybe one day I'll pick it up, but I don't really play a lot of RPGs on the Dreamcast. But I love Grandia too. Uh, I've had this for a long time. Um, never played through this game 100%. If I was going to play this now, obviously I would play it on the Switch. I had that Grandia collection on the Switch. But man, what an excellent game. And this is definitely a better version than what we saw on the PlayStation 2. So yeah, yeah, Grandia 2 on the Dreamcast. I'm really glad that we actually got this out here in the States. Uh, next one, this is a weird one right here. Record of Lodos War. Now, I never, I played this a little bit. This is like a Diablo clone. It even says it on the back of the case here for you know, fans of Diablo. This is what the Dreamcast has been needing. Um, so what this is, this is like, a, okay, so this is like a Western RPG, but made in Japan. So it's like a JRPG made to play like a Western RPG. I know that's kind of weird, but for, for someone like me, just knowing that it was made in Japan, this makes it a lot more appealing to me, even though... It's a Western RPG style, which it really isn't my thing, but it's like an action RPG. Maybe I'll like this. I don't know. Have any of you guys played Record of Lotus War on the Dreamcast? Am I missing out? Now, I got this thing cheap at the at the flea market. I looked it up online. This is like a fifty like a fifty dollar game now, which I, if you think about it, it's pretty cheap for a for an RPG on something like the Dreamcast. But anyway, Record of Lotus War. Um, next up. Uh, is Pure Solar on the Dreamcast. The only reason I haven't opened this is because I have this downloaded on my PS4, but I really dig this RPG, but this game is super hard. I imagine on the Dreamcast, it's probably even harder for whatever reason, but this is in English. Um, I actually had two of these and sent one of these to my buddy Canadian Gamer. I wish this would get a Switch port. Is this out on the Switch? Hell, I need to check. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not out physically if it is, but they need to port this thing to the Switch. I really like Pure Solar, but uh, I guess Watermelon, that's the, I don't know if that's the developer or the, uh, or the publisher there. Uh, Watermelon, port this thing to the Switch, man. It's Pure Solar on the Dreamcast. Okay, let's talk about, all right, let's kind of move into, oh, I, here's something I can show you guys. Here's my VMU. It's a blue VMU. Nothing special, but it goes really well with that that uh, that SNK ASCII pad that I showed you because that's blue too. So it kind of these really really go together, and that, that's just coincidence. I didn't plan for that to happen, obviously. But that's my VMU. Just figure I'd throw it out there. Okay, now let's talk about shooters that came out after the Dreamcast was a thing. Okay, so I don't have them all. Hell, I, I don't have most of them, but these are just the ones that I have. And uh, here's one I picked up more recently, and this actually got a port to the Switch. It came out physically, too. Sturmwind. Um, don't know much about this uh, Red Spot game. I don't know if that's the publisher. I don't know. I'm sure one of those is the publisher and one of those is the developer. I'm not sure which is which. But um, and this is a vertical scroller. Uh, it's a decent shooter, but I, again, I played this more on the uh, on the Switch. I never really played the Dreamcast version. The only reason I own it is because I found it and it was like a $20 game. But Sturmwind, 
Next up, and this is a cheap one. You y'all you can find this. It's out there. See, I found this at a retro store. It was like twenty or thirty bucks. That's Battle Crust. Um, yeah, or maybe it was like forty bucks. It's, it's no more than that. You'll find this game pretty cheap. It's okay. This is an okay game. It's uh, I think I'm pretty sure. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. This is pretty much a, a vertically scrolling version of R Type. I mean, I've played this. I, it's just slipping my mind exactly what's going on in this game. Maybe I'll get some gameplay footage and throw it up there. But this isn't like an excellent shooter or anything like that. It was just a, I mean, it's like a $40 shooter on the Dreamcast. So, if you like shooters and like Dreamcast, Battle Crust. Okay. Here we go, Gunlord. And this, again, this got a Switch port uh, recently. NG Dev Team. Uh, it actually came out. They did a Switch port digitally as well, so you can actually pick. You can actually play this. It's not like Razion, and it's only it's only physical. But uh, this was the first version that I ever played of Gunlord. I'm I'm pretty sure it came out on the Neo Geo systems, the AES and the MBS first. But this is the uh, this is the Dreamcast port. This version's a lot harder than what you would have played on the Switch because you can't you don't really have those save points like you do on the switch and you can't kind of restart your levels the same way you can in this version but this this is this game will bust your balls but if you like running guns this is a pretty good one i mean it play it's a turk and clone is what it is but it's a good one it's a hell of a turk and clone it's a great turk and clone and it's got shoot 'em up levels there's two shoot 'em up levels in this um and the last level is one of the shoot 'em up levels at least i'm pretty sure in this version but at least on the switch version but there's this one really cool shoot 'em up level. I wish, I, God, I wish they would have made more levels like it. But there's a pretty excellent, which I think it's a lot of fun. There's a pretty excellent shoot 'em up level in this. But uh, yeah, Gunlord, Gunlord on the Dreamcast, awesome game. I don't know what the price on this thing's like now, but if you want to play this, download it on your uh, on your Switch. It's kind of expensive. It's kind of pricey. The physical version is like a hundred bucks, but I'd, I'd I'd recommend that one honestly. Uh, here we go. We have Redux Dark Matters, and this is a yeah, Hugh Cast game. Now, what I've heard about Hugh Cast is, so you have NG Dev Team and you have Hugh Cast. Now, look at these spines. That, I mean, look at that. So I heard like one one brother owns one company, and another brother owns the other, or these two brothers own the companies, or something like that i read that in some comment section on a video i posted or somebody's video a few years ago but i would be interested to know what what's the story there i guess they're german companies or somewhere out in europe um ng dev team you're pretty sure german right but what's the deal there you got ng dev team and you have hue cast and you know, some of them they're very similar type of games the cases look the same I mean, they're pretty much like the same company, but yeah, let me know if I'm wrong. You know, what's up with that? What's what's the deal with the Hugh Cast and the Edgy Dev Team? Please let me know in the comments. But this is a Redux Dark Matters. This is just like a, a newer version or a different version of uh, of Ducks. Um, I don't know what the differences are. This is actually a pretty decent game, and from what I remember, it's not super expensive. But I remember playing this, and and, uh, and I really really like this game, but. It's really colorful. It's got like cute like colors and it's not like a cute em up, but it's it's got like pastels and like cute like kind of like sounds that pop and kind of hard to explain, but it's got a really cool visual, really trippy art style. Pr pretty excellent shooter. I, if I actually one day get like a HDMI option for I, I still do this with the composite now. Or yeah, composite. I still play my Dreamcast on composite, but I really need to get some type of HDMI option for my Dreamcast that way I can really enjoy Games like Redux Dark Matters, because it is a really beautiful game, but um, one I recommend. It's, I don't really think it's that expensive either. Um, okay, here we go. Next up, we have Fast Striker, and Fast Striker recently got supports on some systems. We got a port on the Vita. We got a port on the PS4. Don't think we got a Switch port. If we did, it's probably digital, but um, decent game, decent soundtrack. I've heard people say, oh, this is like this great shooter. It's it's okay. It's not great. I like the cover art there. Look at that. Yeah. I don't know why I have the Gunlord. Oh, that's what I paid for Gunlord back in the day. I don't know why I have the Gunlord uh, plastic on here. But anyway, Fast Striker on the Dreamcast. And the last game, and this is the... 
the better of the NG dev team games that I have here. We have Neo Zix or Neo XYX. This is this is one of my again one of my favorite shooters on the Dreamcast. This is in my top three though. Definitely in my top three. This one's actually sealed. This is a sealed copy. It's got a little sticker in there. I got this thing in plastic. Um, guys, if you like games like uh, about games like this. If you like games like Batugan and games like Truxton, then you are going to absolutely love Neozix. It's a vertical scroller. It plays like Batugan and Truxton. Uh, it's very simple, very simple mechanics. There's no real power ups. You just kind of, you kind of just go. But something about the the level design, the fact that it's a vertical scroller, uh, the music, the bosses. I, I just I really love this game, and again, if you if you really love Batsugan, you really love Truxton, you're just gonna you're gonna fall in love with Neo Zix and NG Dev Team. Okay, you ported Razian on the Switch. Okay, I love y'all for that. Y'all need to port Neo Zix, and I know uh, the main developer, what's it, uh, Gray Bands or Fox or whatever his name is, that he he did release a game on Steam, uh, Super Zix or Super X Y X. Um, that's that's the version that they really that needs to get ported to the Switch. Hopefully that version gets ported somewhere because and I have like a, a brand new PC and the damn thing would not work on my computer. There's some type of error code that's thrown out for that. But thank God I have this. And you might be saying, well, John, your copy's sealed. Well, I've, I've just burnt my own copy and I just play it that way. I'm just you know, there's, a, there's a small part of me that is a collector, and that small part of me when you get a game like this and you can actually download it and play it burnt. You're going to leave it sealed. Again, if you're just a weird collector type like me. But I, I just didn't want to open this. And again, that's, uh, that's Neo Zix or Neo XYX on the Sega Dreamcast. And I guess the last thing I could show you is these aren't, these aren't legit copies. These are just burns of games that I have. And um, most of them I made. I think one of them I bought. But here we got Zero Gunner 2. Uh, this got ported on the Psycho Collection on the Switch more recently, but I, I feel like this is probably a better version. Again, less input lag. Uh, this is a... I, I, I haven't even really played this yet, but this is a game. I found an English translated ROM on the internet called Seven Mansions, and I found a cover art for it. So I printed it out. Um, I downloaded some disc art, printed that out as well, and then just downloaded the Japanese case art, but... Have any of you guys played this? It shows the team that did the translation there. Um, yeah, Seven Mansions on the Dreamcast. If this is any good, maybe I'll maybe I'll play it one day. But it was free. I just downloaded it, you know, printed the cover art and burnt it and everything like that. Uh, hey, I've already shown you all a copy of this, but this is a copy that I made for my YouTube channel a while back, and I even got the look the Naomi uh, cover art for the disc there, but. If any of you guys need this, let me know. I mean, it's just a burn, but it plays well. I'll send it out to you. Uh, another burn, Gun Spike. Came out here as Cannon Spike. This is an excellent game. I, God, I need to find a copy of this for real. Like, yeah, I got a burnt copy right here, but I want the legit copy. And it, I don't need a Gun Spike, but I would love to get at least a Cannon Spike. Um, this is actually a burnt one. I bought this online for a couple bucks. This is a, this is not a legit copy. This is a burn. Plays great though. You would never know, but you're going to. And another great shooter, Capcom, Mars Matrix. Another great shooter that I would love to. This kind of takes uh, the giggling mechanics and kind of turns it up. It's 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 different, but it, I I kind of I mean you can tell that the same programmer, at least I think the same programmer worked on it. I mean they're both Capcom games. They just have some similarities there. I don't know. I think I like Giggling better, but I definitely like Mars Matrix. And one day I would love to own a legit copy of Mars Matrix. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much that's it. That's everything I got for the Dreamcast. I, I don't have an arcade stick. I do have one extra controller. Um, I just got one controller out there. I, I tried to find pretty much everything I have for the system. And, uh, you know, again, that's not a huge collection, but... What came out on the Dreamcast, I feel like was pretty excellent. And now that I got this baby right here, I can really enjoy most of these shooters. And I do look forward to actually buying a DC Striker pad. And God, I should probably get one before those things become like rare and hard to find. Because if you're like me and you like shooters on the Dreamcast, that OG controller on this thing, it just, it just don't cut it. 
something like this is just it's a game changer on the dreamcast god i love it anyways guys that's what i got for the dreamcast what do you have for the dreamcast and you know what am i missing like some type of awesome shooter that's like damn he hasn't played that please let me know in the comments but until next time guys peace